Discussions of Truth, that's Seek and Destroy always, opening up with that for, well, over two, two and a half years now. Uh, pr probably more than that, uh, because we seek out to destroy. We aim to seek and destroy corruption, if you will, uh, here on Discussions of Truth. Uh, just ended with investigative journalist based in Brooklyn, Helen Byniski. She operates the site Helen of Destroy. Look, until the Zika virus hit Miami and South Beach and I was exposed to neurotoxins to combat that virus, nor did I ever question any type of narrative from your government. Yes, I lived many years that way. But since I began diving in and doing research, coming up on four years ago, that has changed. Folks, let me remind you, in case you have forgotten, you are the government. If you're in the United States, you're basically the last beacon of hope on this planet, in my opinion. There's some other nice governments. Costa Rica is a good one. Um, but to give you an idea, if you're in England, and, and I have British guests joining the program, got another one coming up next month based in Hong Kong. Um, if you're in Britain, you're at the peril, if you will, of the same tyrannical banking type system that we are in the United States. It's a central bank system, and the Corporation of London, which houses the Bank of England, is a sovereign entity. It's not part of the United Kingdom per se. It does hold the Bank of England does hold your name, England, but you, as English people. And part of the monarchy, as the Queen reports to this corporation, not vice versa, you are being puppeted by it, just as Americans are puppeted by the hidden cloak, the puppet master who resides behind that cloak, masters of a the Federal Reserve. That's the major problem I see here, folks. Uh, and uh, write me, call me, inform me otherwise. Uh, I don't get into to debates. Okay, you, you want to support cryptocurrency? Support cryptocurrency. You want to microchip yourself as my, as Microsoft wants to do, so that they can run a cryptocurrency and mine cryptocurrency off of you and your energies. And that's a fact. W O zero two zero six zero six zero six is the patent. It's fact, F-A-C-T. So if you don't have a problem with that, yeah, allow the government into your house to break up your family, I suppose, and microchip everybody. I, I have an issue with that. Just me personally. Just me. Okay, so Robert Scott Bell joining us uh, today, this hour. Again, we just uh, ended with Helen uh, Byniski. She runs Helen to Destroy. Uh, because there is misconception about natural medicine in today's big pharma controlled world, and by the way, next month, Gerald Posner, uh, author of Pharma, three time New York Times bestselling author, speaking out about the corruption in the pharmaceutical industry, joining us June 3rd. Uh, Dr. Robert Scott Bell is author and radio host. Bell is a homeopathic practitioner and expert in silver therapeutics. Next week, folks, James O'Keefe. Coming up at the 4 o'clock hour, and at that 5 o'clock, at this 5 o'clock slot, we'll be joined by Seth Dillon, uh, based out of Florida. He operates uh, Babylon B. All right, so without further ado, because he has been waiting for us, Robert Scott Bell, bringing him in via Skype right now. Natural Healing and Liberty since 1999. All right, I'm here. Robert, welcome to Discussion of Truth. This is Ian Trottier. Thank you for joining the show. Uh, how are you, sir? Doing well, Ian. I'm warmed up because I just got off my show a few minutes ago, so I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm excited to be on with you. Thank you for having me. 
you're you're more than welcome. So talk about that a little bit. You've got uh, you got a show that airs three to five p.m. Eastern Standard on weekdays. Tell listeners a little bit about your your show and what you do. Yeah, it's my twenty first year in broadcast uh, media. Uh, started on radio, syndicated radio. We still have a Sunday broadcast on syndicated radio, but of course expanded into all of the multimedia formats available to us on video as well. Uh, 3 to 5 Eastern, uh, Monday through Friday, Sundays, uh, 1 to 3 in the afternoon. You can learn about it or listen and watch right at robertscottbell.com. It's all about health, freedom, and healing liberty. We take on you know the politics of healing, yes, but the economics of healing, and we talk about healing on physical, emotional, uh, mental, uh, economic, political, and spiritual levels. Uh, all of it's integrated because uh, it, we are disintegrated at our own risk, and that's how they divide and conquer us by telling us, oh, well, those principles you learned about in church, whatever, oh, they don't apply here. You know, they apply everywhere. And that's what we try to do in terms of health and healing. Well said. We, we just we just ended with uh, investigative uh, reporter and journalist, if you will, out of uh, Brooklyn, Helen Byniski. She operates a website called Helen of Destroy, and she was talking about some of those same basic elements of simply being disconnected to what we identify and know as being human beings. That couldn't be more uh, more than accurate in in, in, in today's world. Uh, uh, Robert, uh, you are a doctor of uh, uh, you're a homeopathic oh, practitioner. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, homeop- homeopathic medicine, which is not something I knew growing up. I was raised by doctors and pharmacy people. I was allopathically ro- grown in America, and I suffered uh, the first 18, 19 years of my life with medicines, drugs after drug after drug, with every ailment that I had. And I were plenty. I was like the canary in the coal mine of Generation X, much like now has become commonplace in Generation Y and Z. In terms of chronic illnesses and ailments, it's over half of the young people in America are chronically ill. I was one of the rare ones early on. And recognizing one day when I found homeopathy and natural medicine and organic food that there was a different path out of this mess and that I did not suffer from drug deficiencies of any kind. (laughs) I had a lot of nutrient deficiencies and a lot of toxicological burdens that I had to undo. Uh, So that transformed my health over the next couple of years when I started at 24. And then I dedicated my life to say, man, I've got to tell my fellow Americans about what I didn't know. And, of course, it's grown to a global phenomenon to to reach out and reconnect with our roots in natural healing, which uh, is of what nature and nature's God as our founders uh, of the, of the uh, uh, United States said, you know, uh, honoring nature and nature's God. So that's a big part of my mission with media and lecturing. And I'm going to be in Charlotte, North Carolina this weekend for the advanced medicine conference with my buddy, Dr. Rashid Batar. And uh, we're going to continue getting the word out. Robert, are you based in Florida? Where are you? I'm, well, I'm based wherever I am. Honestly, <laughs> um, I was in Georgia for many years, came onto this planet in New York, was in Florida, been in Utah now for a while. And uh, so, uh, you know, I've got two kids, my wife, and, you know, want to find a good place for them. Always looking for okay. a culture that is supportive of our uh, passion for freedom, right? Fundamental liberties, uh, rather than those that have now engaged in, in various forms of socialism and communism based on the fear of uh, an invisible virus. That's what we see. Uh, with now surveys coming out saying, man, we should just all have universal health care. I'm like, dude, do you realize that that's going to cover the third leading cause of death and mandate that you participate in it? Uh Uh-uh, not me. Uh, And other aspects of uh, of payments from the government that will come with strings that will tie you into mandatory vaccinations and drugging and and, and, and tracing you, contact tracing you. It's just nonsense because the tests for COVID-19 are not even validated. Interesting. Robert, for some reason, I thought you were in Stewart. I started the program. It's coming up on four years ago uh, out of the district of Wynwood in, in Miami. Talk a little bit about the big pharma. Uh, next month, we've got uh, Gerald Posner, who's a, a New York Times bestselling author, three books, uh, Wall Street, former Wall Street attorney. He'll be joining the program to talk about his newest book, uh, uh, Pharma, uh, Greed, uh, 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 Greed and Lies. Uh, talk a little bit about, about, about pharmaceutical industry, for, uh, in your view, for listeners. Sure. Well, the book I wrote with Ty Bollinger, it's called Unlock the Power to Heal. And in the beginning of the book, we go to how how we got here. A big part of how we got here happened in 1910. Two brothers, more famous, should be more famous or infamous than the Wright brothers that everybody knows about, Orville and Wilbur. This is not about them. This is about Abraham and Simon Flexner. They were hired by the Rockefeller and Carnegie Foundations to establish a uh, a report. It was like preordained, if you will, pre-written. A report that would go on and survey medical schools across America. Which, by wow. the way, in the early 20th century, 
uh, were homeopathic primarily. Homeopathic medical schools, naturopathic medical schools. There were chiropractic schools. There were herbal eclectic schools. And yes, there were some what we call allopathic physician schools, medical schools. And what happened is they surveyed and they established that the only legitimate schools moving forward would be the ones that taught patented petrochemical medicines My that would goodness. one day be approved by uh, a centralized bureaucratic oligarchy like the FDA. I call them the Fear and Death Administration. And so they sanctioned one form of medicine to the elimination of all others and established what is known as the medical monopoly, or as my friend John Rappaport calls it, the Church of Biological Mysticism. I call it pharmaceutical mysticism. And so it's as if all medicine only started in 1910 and everything moving forward was as long as it was petrochemical medicine, which is the curricula of medical school today, uh, then it was legitimized and everything else was to be called quackery or somehow diminished in its ability to reach the people or uh, the freedom to communicate what th that other methods could do that predated modern medicine by uh, thousands of years in some cases. Wow, incredible information there. Uh, I see that you uh, have joined uh, such outlets, Fox News being one of them. Uh, what, was, uh, what was the reception after you had gone on, on Fox News, History of Medicine and Healthcare? Well, yeah, I did uh, a number of interviews with my good friend. Um, I don't know if you remember uh, the supermodel from the 80s and 90s, and uh, uh, Carol Alt was one of them. And she had a, a program on the weekends on Fox News called A Healthy You with Carol Alt. And she had the audacity to invite me, RSB, on her show a number of times talking about things like this. And uh, I was on, and it, and it was really well received, except that when she did the final interview with me uh, on vaccinations that never aired, her, her show got canceled. And I think that there was clearly a, a line that you couldn't step over. Yeah, right. And I call that sacrament in the church of pharmaceutical mysticism. You, you're not allowed to question these injections that can bring on disease and death as opposed to worshiping them as sacrament. So uh, there are limitations, but we did go places that, we're not supposed to go. And God bless Carol Alt for uh, doing that. And she had on also my my good buddy um, who uh, wrote many books and one of the smartest doctors I ever knew. He's no longer with us, uh, Dr. Nicholas Gonzalez. He was curing cancer through nutrition, and he, he was on that show. So miracles can happen from time to time. Yeah, and certainly if we're associating ourselves with the right uh, teachers and educators that know what they're talking about. Uh, speaking of that, Ray McGovern, who's a former guest on the program, 27 years in the CIA, would hand deliver George Bush briefings in the 80s. He's, he, he, he said exactly that. Unfortunately, this is, this is what's happening, is that uh, people who don't know what they're really talking about uh, need to find people that do know what they're talking about. So let's talk about, um, let's talk about uh, vaccines for a moment, because uh, this is a hot debate. Uh, states like California and New York, of course, are implementing these mandatory vaccine measures. You've got parents, on the other hand, of these uh, these vaccine uh, children saying, hey, you know, my kid was fine. He gets he gets all these vaccine shots, and now he starts staring at a wall, and, and, and he's digressing in, in, in this, and he, lo and behold, he develops autism. So it's, it's, it's obviously a major debate because it's affecting, uh, it's affecting, it's affecting some children, and, and certainly it's not affecting others. So what is your view, uh, Robert, on, uh, on vaccines? Well, I, you know, I was vaccinated as a child. I was a pharmaceutical family. We had far fewer vaccines, although I had an adverse reaction to the smallpox vaccine as a baby. And I remember that I was old enough to remember the pain in my head, the, the migraine like brutal pains, the inability to move my head or even my eyes for a while and uh, just be a kid. So they stopped the smallpox vaccine because it was so dangerous, and they claimed they eradicated smallpox, which is the arrogance of man to claim that he can eradicate anything that God created ultimately, except himself. We can destroy ourselves. But the idea that injecting toxic poisons in however minute doses is going to somehow bring about health, I think it's lunatic, honestly. It's lunacy. The idea, of course, is that you can sensitize the immune system by eliciting artificially an immune response that results in an antibody. And in the era of COVID-19, interestingly enough, the medical authorities are acknowledging that we're not sure if antibodies are protective against coronavirus or whatever. And when we were kids... Ian, I don't know how old you are, but uh, we were told that you got chicken pox and you're done. You sure. got yeah. immunity for yeah. life. Uh, but of course, now we're seeing people that get the chicken pox vaccine are now getting shingles as young adults. It used to be that was a rare event in older adults. Uh, and that is the same virus that they link to chicken pox in childhood. 
uh, because we've eliminated the chronic constant exposure to these circulating, what we call viruses are, some now are calling in the medical field exosomes that spew out from within our own cells that they're endogenous, they're not necessarily something we catch. But the limitation of exposure to these things via artificially suppressing them through vaccination has created an area where most people are no, never exposed to it in real life, and then they are exposed to the vaccinated form of this, and they don't develop real immunity, and now are suffering with other kinds of chronic immunologically suppressive type issues. Uh, we see that young people in America now, and I think I mentioned this earlier, 54% of young people in America are chronically ill, have one or more chronic ailments. Yeah. That's crazy. You know, that's the trade-off, but they don't acknowledge that, that they say, oh, look, no more measles. Well, really, have you eradicated it or have you uh, suppressed what we call the expression of measles, which is not the disease itself, but it's the maturation. It's the response to throw out whatever's going on. And in many, I say many, in some advanced medicine circles, they acknowledge that measles is an important rite of passage for children, transformative in terms of liver function, to mature, mature the liver, and to protect against certain chronic diseases, autoimmunity, and cancers later in life. So the idea of suppressing the expression of what we call normal rites of passage that have been with us since the dawn of humanity because somebody might die from it? Well, we should ask the question of why do those who die from it die from it as opposed to others that the vast majority don't? Correct. And so we're, we ask the wrong questions and then we apply medicine improperly because we don't say, hey, could there be a real reason for this stuff that's beneficial to us? And can we navigate that in a healthy, safe way, which if we opened our eyes beyond Flexner Report uh, inspired medical school curricula, we would begin to see there's a whole world of healing that involves botanicals of creation that God gave us. So we know, we, we know post-World War II, uh, we look at Operation Paperclip. Um, we, 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 of course, can trace back your, your mentioning uh, Rockefeller-funded science. Uh, the Rockefellers uh, own a patent on the Zika virus uh, that hit Miami about uh, about four years ago, just under four years ago. Uh, they they also own uh, Chevron Chemical Corporation, which developed the pesticide. So you're getting to like something called a Hegelian dialectic. And then I went yes. down a road named Anthony uh, Anthony Sutton. But uh, of course we've got we've got we've got COVID COVID nineteen now. Uh, we've got a global pandemic. Uh, there, there's 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 very various things I want to address here with you from a homeopathic approach. Uh, and it's interesting enough that you're, you're saying that was kind of the base element of medicine in the U.S. before the Rockefeller start dabbling in their monopolistic control of various elements of, well, basically all elements uh, from my point of view uh, mm -hmm. of American society. But I mean, you've got a, a Dr. Judy Mikovits, who's a uh, previous program uh, guest on, on the program. And she's recently quoted as saying, why would you close a beach? There are healing microbes in the salt water. This is insanity. Well, what's your what's your take on that quote? What's your what's your personal view on that, Robert? Oh, I agree completely. I was just talking with another journalist. You may know Miriam Hanain, and she was talking about in Costa Rica that they've closed the beaches down, but they now reopen them weekdays, as if Corona takes off and only comes out on the weekends. I mean, there's such insanity to what the response is to this, and what we have is not a pandemic of COVID-19. We have a pandemic of fear fear porn, fear of viruses, fear of germs, the germ theory. We go back to the basis of the wrong choice we made by following or aligning with uh, Pasteur, Louis Pasteur. He was friends with the emperor. Throughout history, it's all about who you know, not what you know, even because of what you know could be wrong, which it was in Pasteur's case, who stole and bastardized from Béchamp and, and also Claude Bernard. When we talk about healing in homeopathic circles or holistically inclined circles, we talk about the law of the terrain. That is the terrain or the milieu or the environment determines health or disease and that we have a microbiome. We even have a virome and that a constant exposure to these things is what keeps us strong and our immune systems communicating to one another and alerting one another. We learn from all of this. And yet the idea is we must, uh, 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 well, let's say um, we must stop breathing. Here's the end. We just got to stop breathing because it's just too dangerous. We might kill somebody by breathing on them, or we might be killed by somebody who's breathing. So now we have a Luciferian view of reality, not a godly view, that says everybody you meet is a potential deadly interaction. And whether they mean to or not, just it's just the way it is. We're all a bunch of little devils. And so we got to look at what this is. Just like Zika was a scam, it was... Um, well, different uh, herbicides, fungicides, pesticides, um, uh, larvicides being oh. dumped into the water in, in Brazil right. with a known side effect of microcephaly, a birth right. defect. 
And then they say, oh, it's the virus. But the virus is always a cover story for toxicological burdens, whether it be airborne pollutants, injectable pollutants, uh, GMO, poison, foods, you name it. We can see corresponding threats to those who are the most toxic, the most drug, def- well, proficient, the most people like the old people that are dying of this. They're not dying of this. They're, they're, they were on death's door on multiple medications that destroyed their immune system. And, and so then they say, well, COVID killed them. Really? You got hit by a bus. The bus driver had COVID. And that's what it, you, it wasn't the bus. It was COVID. Yeah. That's the insanity of all of this. Yeah, uh, I, I'm certainly familiar with Miriam. She's been a, a guest three times. She was, she happens, Robert. She actually, ha- actually, ha- actually happens to be the program's very first guest. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, so uh, uh, another recent guest, uh, uh, W. Gifford Jones. He's uh, a Harvard-educated medical doctor. He's 96 years old. He's based in Toronto. He recently climbed a skyscraper at I think he was what 93, perhaps at that time. It's been a few years. Uh, he said on this program, Robert. He said, look. He testified to this, if you will. He said, look, anybody can take on and kill any virus, including the coronavirus. And I believe he said coronavirus and didn't isolate it as the COVID-19 strain. He says he can combat that with an intravenous take of vitamin C. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I just had uh, a guest on talking about that very thing. Uh, Because if you're dealing with the medical profession, now we're talking allopathic medicine. Okay, they are typically doing drugs to suppress, attack and kill things. And of course, inadvertently, I say for most cases, I don't mean that they intend to, the patient could die, right? The the third leading cause of death in America, in the West, is modern medicine. That's not me saying it because I'm a homeopath. That's in the peer reviewed medical literature. I would argue that it's wrong, that it's the first leading cause of death because it contributes to number one and two. That would be cancer and heart disease based on the toxic burdens that they place on the body through uh, emergency trauma interventions where they have legitimacy, but they apply those same concepts to everything, which is wrong. So if we look at vitamin C, uh, it's most vitamin C is a, is a synthetic pharmaceutical product. People don't realize that ascorbic acid. I, I would argue that it is not the same thing as if you eat an orange or something that contains what they call uh, vitamin C. But the idea here is that the allopaths that are using toxic chemicals, if they transition to something like ascorbic acid intravenously, they are having tremendous success. And the reports on the recoveries, people are not dying if they're intervening with this therapy. Now, from my perspective, personally, and what I do, I don't rely on vitamin C personally. I don't speak out against it, per se, but I will utilize selenium that trace mineral selenium at micrograms, and I will achieve the success that they are getting sometimes, a lot of times, with C at grams, thousands of milligrams. So I'm looking at the law of economy or using better kung fu. I argue that selenium is much more important, vital, and efficient at at less dosages than C. But again, I'm happy if a doctor uses C over what they normally would use, even if it's hydroxychloroquine or other things. Have you found any links between, let's say, Operation Paperclip, uh, Paperclip, and this this ridiculous vaccine? I call it vidic- ridiculous. I just I think a mandatory vaccination. I think I think pharmaceuticals should be uh, should should be concentrating more on uh, on, on 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 cures, and they're not. They're cure- on pre- prevention. So you're losing your rights sure. with prevention. Um, but have you have you have you, I'm just throwing that out there. See see if you have you made any connection between this vaccine craze. Uh, and we're getting these laws with with Operation Paperclip. Well, we have the vaccine uh, origin is this Jenner guy, uh, and he had there's a temple of vaccinia dedicated to this guy in England, and he basically scraped the udders uh, of cows that had cowpox and began just opening up the arms of innocent victims and shoved this stuff in there, and they would die of sepsis or they'd have to remove their arms just to live. So the anti-vaccination movement was born as fast as Jenner could spew out his garbage, and that became a religion. It is a religion of vaccinology. Now, there are uh, doctors, certainly when you tie in at paperclip issues, um, we look at, well, where where did the treatment for cancer, the cancer industrial complex, come from? Mustard gases of World War I, toxic things of war, biological weapons of war that were then converted to be medicines to kill cancer. Ironically, so we see a lot of the uh, the things that we the abhorrent practices of doctors in Nazi Germany manifested even further in the 20th century advancements of science without God, without spirit. 
right? Because science is not bad in and of itself. It's when you abandon spirit. If you're an atheist scientist, you're a great danger to many people because you don't concern yourself with negative outcomes, with un unintended consequences, or someone that is Im imbued with the spirit would never would never do the things that they do in modern medicine to people that are on death's door with devastating things like cancer. And so instead they put poisons that cause cancer in you to cure it. So how do you poison people back to health? And it's the same thing with vaccinations. You're injecting poison and expecting someone to be healthier. And the best that I can say that they can do is suppress the expression of any named disease. But that is not health giving. That's health demising, if I can say it that way. Yeah, that's beautifully said. I love that. Poisoning people back to health. What's your take on hydroxychloroquine? Why is uh, Trump now recently coming out and saying, hey, I'm taking this? I don't know. I mean, look, he's a he's a pharmaceutical guy, but he also knows about the danger of vaccinations. I know he knows that. Uh, there's not a question in my mind that he knows it. So why is he impressed with that drug? I don't know. He's got advisors that he believes have legitimacy in terms of allopathic medicine. It is uh, based on the, uh, the anti-malarial drugs, right. which have known side effects. Yes, you can die of, of, of that drug. Yes, you can have hallucinations while on that drug. Not everybody does, but it, you know any of these medicines come with risks. If we look to selenium once again, as uh, so, somebody, uh, my buddy, Dr. Rasha Bittar says, selenium is birth control for viruses. It just stops them from replicating. And also the use of bioactive silver in the colloidal family. Silver stops right. viral replication. It also enhances immune response. So we have many tools that are non-toxic that can be safely used. And that's why I'm not at all concerned about this, except I'm concerned about people that are so afraid that they will do stupid things to themselves and others in the presence of coronavirus fear porn. Yeah, I want, I want to talk a little bit about that because certainly rights are being infringed on here and I want to hear what, what, what your take is on that. But talking uh, talking a little bit now about stopping these this viral, viral replica, replication, uh, replication in the body, you brought up silver therapy. Uh, yeah. Talk a little bit about that. Well, okay, silver ions are the bioactive state within a body. A biological system, if you're going to use silver – Neutral silver, silver bound to compounds or complexes is not active. What is active would be what, what are called dissociating ions. Now, for those of you interested in some of the science, there's a book called The Body Electric by Dr. Robert Becker. It goes into some of that. That inspired me to learn more about it because as a homeopath, I was detoxifying patients, including children, of heavy metals like cadmium, mer mercury, uh, lead, aluminum, and such. And I, I was suspicious of silver because it's, a, it's another metal. Why do I want to use it? Now, I found that silver is contained in human and animal breast, uh, breast milk, cow milk, goat milk, human milk. It's found in medicinal edible mushrooms and grains and, and even water sources. So it is not a dangerous heavy metal. Having said that, I'm not wanting to ingest more than I would need. So I found a form of silver in the colloidal family that's known as bioactive silver hydrosol that isolated only the bioactive form of silver in a low concentration so you could safely take it every day if you wanted to. And among the properties, including immune modulation, facilitating proper immune response, white blood cells and B lymphocyte activity, that's great. But it also has a direct intervention capacity to stop the reproduction of bacteria as well as fungal cells, if you have yeast or other things, and interacting with viral proteins, it can, it can bind and denature the protein capsid structure of a virus and or penetrate that virus and bind to the genetic material that it steals from you, whether it's an RNA virus as they claim COVID is or DNA, it doesn't matter. So you have a safe intervention to stop it if you believe the virus is the cause. I do not, but if you do, you, you can safely intervene with these forms of silver that are safe to ingest that will not turn you blue. The wrong form to excess could, but the kind I use and my family uses is such that my kids have never once had an antibiotic. Wow. And where, where can this, uh, where can this, uh, silver iodine be purchased for listeners? The bioactive silver hydrosol I use is sovereign silver. And for the doctors out there that want to use a little stronger concentration for more serious issues, it's called Argentin 23. Uh, you could just you know, search for that. It's, it's, it's available pretty much everywhere. Robert, talk a little bit now about, about COVID-19. What, what, what's happening in your view? Do, do just, just your, your take on, on, on this pandemic here and, and how it affects is affecting Americans. Well, I think it's, it's a, a, a fear-based science fiction story made into reality because through fear, we can uh, create reality or co-create reality. And it's, it's an artificial induction. Now, 
at the beginning of this, John Rappaport and I were reporting on this, talking about the extreme pollution in Wuhan in China. And you could see satellite imagery of the disaster that was the air in that area for a long time spewing things out, whether it be factory issues or, or uh, uh, sanitation issues and other things. There were also uh, mandatory vaccine programs there, as well as uh, reports that uh, that was one of the first cities to go full on 5G. And that, of course, addresses the frequencies that can harm a number of functions within the body. And so you throw that perfect storm together, and then now you bring a story of uh, upregulated viruses, right? Weaponized viruses, they call gain-of-function viruses. Arguably, they've said there was some research being done at UNC Chapel Hill in America, and that the same researchers from China ended up taking that research with the help of, guess who, Tony Fauci, funding some, um, sending money over to Wuhan to the lab to continue to work with that. So you have competing and parallel stories that build on one another. And the ideal goal is to ignore all of the toxicological and um, EMF components and just point fingers at an escaped virus from a lab that was combined somehow with bat RNA. And that's the story because we have been trained for many years under the wrong headed vision and viewpoint and paradigm of the germ theory that these things are actually the cause of disease. Ignore toxic pollution. Ignore, like in Brazil, that they dumped larvicides into the water that moms-to-be were drinking and caused birth defect. And so, no, it's not that. It's a virus. So I dispute viral causation of disease on its face, on principle, that they have no evidence that the virus is actually the cause of even one death. Not even one, even if they say it's present, and that's arguable because the tests themselves, PCR not being an appropriate technology, according to Kerry Mullis, the Nobel Prize winning developer of PCR technology, it is not not an appropriate technology to identify an acute infectious disease cause, right? Stop, full stop. It's never been validated to be such since that time, even though he's passed on. And then we go now to antibody tests. Oh, we need immunity passports. We're going to do contact tracing with antibody tests. Oh, do you know that there is no test for COVID-19? It doesn't exist. It's not been validated. It's not been approved. It's an emergency authorization to use a test that isn't even valid to identify one specific coronavirus. It's cross-reactive and nonspecific. You could have had a cold last year, and you are COVID-19 positive. And so we're going bonkers based on the germ theory and fear of viruses without evidence to show that even in one death, it was the cause of the death. Being present is not enough, especially when the 90% or more of the people that died were old, infirm, on multiple medications, and we're going to die of something pretty soon anyway, with or without it, and I might add, probably killed by the treatments for whatever was ailing them on top of COVID, like the uh, ventilators that kill four out of five people that use them. Great stuff there, Robert. Let's let's look at flu vaccinations, uh, Walgreens, whatever it may be. Oh, you giving mean out stupid people shots. Love it. Could it could could <laughs> could 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 these vaccinations have traces of COVID nineteen? Let's say somebody got a flu vaccine last year or two years ago. Could could there have been uh, strains of this COVID nineteen in that? Well, you go to Judy Mikovits and and she'll talk about all kinds of viral contamination all kinds of, of proteins that don't belong in there on top of whatever it is they mean to put in there. So there's no question there's contamination. It's not much better than the time of Jenner when he scraped this garbage off of cow udders and opened arms with blades that were probably rusty. So I am not of the mindset that this is a high technology with very clean uh, concepts of purity before they put this stuff in there. I mean, in independent assays of a lot of vaccines, they, they found all kinds of weird stuff that aren't supposed to be there, including nanoparticulate uh, of, of many different things like glyphosate, the active ingredient in Roundup. You talk about a mess, a toxicological burden on top of any viral contamination that you're concerned about. Yeah, so th th this is very interesting. Let's let's look at uh, now some of these rights here. Lockdown. What's what's your view on a lockdown? Is that is that purposely designed? Let's take the narrative that yes, this COVID nineteen is uh, has been manipulated in a laboratory. We can go Fort Detrick, where it may be, or UNC, where it may be. Uh, let's say that yes, it has been engineered. Um, if it's been engineered. Uh, and now we've got this scare attack, this 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 fear of catching it, and so this government enforced lockdown. Um, where do you go from there, Robert? I, you know, you can't fix stupid. 
I'm sorry. The entire planet and all the people on it throughout history have gone about the Earth cabin with no masks and no gloves right. and no hand sanitizer. And somehow yeah. we're still here. Thousands and thousands of years before there was anything called vaccination, right, and Jenner. So the idea now that in order to survive, we must distance from one another. We shall not be affectionate. Don't shake hands. Don't hug. Don't right. kiss. Don't interact. Although Fauci was claimed to say it was okay to go on. Uh, what is that? Um, that cra- uh, I can't remember the app where you meet somebody and have sex with them. What is that one called? Tinder, right? He's like, yeah, it's okay to go on Tinder. I can't believe you can't make this stuff up. And he says, but we should never shake hands again. <laughs> it's crazy. So this is a Luciferian agenda, to, as I said, to make us each of us look at each other as enemies and, and, and distance also arguably that if we stay six feet apart, it's going to be easy for tracking with 5g towers and our cell phones or implants by a vaccination or otherwise. So to make this the new normal, which is an Orwellian term, if you've ever heard one, uh, is also about tracking us in the future. So no, this is not something we should comply with. So Wearing masks are, de- are detrimental to your health unless that mask is infused with silver and, and or copper, then at least it's safe if you have to wear one temporarily. Michael Hall, MD, joined the program last week, and he actually has a lawsuit against Dr. Fauci for his involvement through the CDC with the whole Zika scare in Miami. Uh, Robert, uh, what is the basis? What is, if, if, if in, 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 in your view, the engine or the wheel that is driving this machine? It, are you able? Have you been able to isolate or, or identify um, Americans that are out there that are starting to, if you will, wake up, understand that their republic is falling? Where can they go? Where can they help to identify to make some sort of a sense as to? what to break down? Well, it, it's being driven into reality by our fear, by our ignorance and their arrogance, okay? So I've argued for many years, and I've done a lot of political rallies too. I don't claim to be a member of any party per se, but I like to bring principles out. And I've talked to those who love liberty for many years. I said, unless you get off of this worship of pharmaceuticals and doctors, because they'll often be all for freedom, and then they'll go, oh, but that vaccine thing, we should still mandate that. Because they, they're, they're falling prey to the fear porn and the germ theory. So if we don't embrace the reality that health, healthy life begets healthy life, and we must interact, and we must not kill germs per se. We must have a healthy balance when we eat correctly, when we exercise, when we are exposed to sunlight, vitamin D production, etc., that we have nothing to fear. And that we don't need pharmaceutical saviors to ride in on their white stethoscope wearing horses to save us from the government or Fauci at NIAID and NIH, until we get there, we are vulnerable to this takeover. Because right now we could say, even though there is a little bit of a political divide on the shutdowns, Democrats want to shut down, Republicans maybe don't, but there still is when it comes to viruses, they go, oh, well, that's not political. That's that's going after everybody. So we abandon our love of liberty and go, well, maybe this was the exception and we have to give up liberty because if not, we're all going to die. So we have to get smarter about our own biological health, our own realities. Of course, I believe we're spiritual beings having a human experience in human bodies. That's the temporary shell. Now we got to take control over that part of our health because if we turn it over like we have for too long to an elite class of priests in the church of pharmaceutical mysticism sanctioned by government media and Bill Gates, then we are inevitably going to be led down the lockdown uh, uh, pathway, if you will, to permanent branding via vaccination, tattoos, invisible ink tattoos called Luc- with ink called luciferase. Couldn't make that up. Bill Gates is endorsing. And at that point, again, we can say we love liberty, but we're too afraid of our own biological shadows to embrace it in reality. And then we let these boneheads that claim to know something that they don't know rule us from above. That's not right. By the way, uh, Robert, I can tell you're in studio. You sound great. Let me let me let me paint this for you, and I want to hear your response. Uh, yeah, 1911 a Rockefeller antitrust lawsuit. 19. 19- 
2013, Federal Reserve Act passes. Uh, Rockefeller Foundation uh, formed that same year. Then you've got you've got the FDR uh, FDR gold bullion uh, confiscation from the American public. You got Fort Knox. You got the early I think it's 1971. Richard Nixon abolishes yep. the 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 gold standard uh, for American currency. Of course, you've got just a few years before that the JFK getting his head blown off in uh, in, in in Dallas. Uh, and and the the I, my my view is because he was uh, he had inserted uh, inserted currency backed on the U.S. Treasury and and not in the Federal Reserve. Uh, right. But we can go with that narrative. So now we've got 2020. Um, ha- me personally, having lived through the Zika virus uh, scare, um, I'm now inserting cryptocurrency and making a link. With Microsoft W O zero two zero six zero six zero six, like you're saying, you can't write that, you can't make that up, um, and this is a published world patent uh, by Microsoft just a few months ago to control a cryptocurrency software system off of mining uh, microchipped human beings. Wow! Yeah, just stunning and interesting. You you laid out a really brilliant timeline of significant events. Proceeded by one year. Remember 1910 Flexner report? <laughs> Isn't that interesting? That followed on from there. All of these other things, because the ultimate end game is to utilize our ignorance or our fear of germs against us to manifest all of that, including making us all go to virtual money by fiat, if you will, right. through Microsoft patents, because money is going to be, well, there's there's coronavirus on that stuff. You don't want right. to use that. Right. But, Right. So that we go digital in that way, completely tracked. And so I would say that at this point in time, if you are not once again utilizing specie, if you will, constitutional coin, gold, silver or other innovations that go outside of the realm of digitalization, because there's vulnerability there. There is now an ability, once again, to go back to what the founder said. What is money? We, we studied it. <laughs> and, it, you know, ultimately it's whatever we say it is. But could we have the freedom to choose what that is, whether it be gold and silver? Or Utah has the Utah Goldbacks. United Precious Metal Association has now a technology where they can actually embed quantifiable, validated gold in little notes at levels in which you can actually have spendable gold. Which usually wasn't the case because it was more, it was too valuable. You carry an ounce of gold, you can't buy a loaf of bread with that. You could do it with an uh, you know, ounce of silver, you can buy some stuff. But now we have spendable gold in that way. So we have to continue to innovate to have that physical interaction and localism. We must move away from globalism and look to support one another at the localist of local levels, including food production, which is now being shipped from all over the, the Americas and all over the world just in time and realize, my gosh, with the shortage of toilet paper, people were freaking out. Right. Can you imagine right. more than three days, the, the grocery stores aren't full again. In most places, you're going to have the real zombie apocalypse as your neighbor is going to attempt to eat you. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't thought about that, but the, <laughs> that's uh, reminiscent that's of. But the... I'm growing my own food and everybody <laughs> needs to. Yeah. The, the, uh, wow. Yeah, it made me think of Lake Tahoe in California and the Donner Party and uh, cannibalism. Yeah. yeah, it's not something anybody would like to think about. <laughs> but if you get hungry enough, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's unthinkable. But there's been plenty of movies and television shows about what would happen in such cases. And so we really need to be thinking about self-sufficiency and localism and hyper-localism because even though I'm a fan of freedom of choice of what you want to use to spend or exchange, whether it be digital currencies or not, I realize there's vulnerability. You know, even even a, uh, one of those uh, pulse things that you can do, electromagnetic pulse, you can wipe out the entire computer grid. What then, right? Having physical presence of exchangeable goods or services some way, make yourself valuable to your community. Uh, and then even the worst disasters, you'll survive and maybe even thrive through them. Robert, as we as we close out in the final moments here, I, I'd like to get some 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 closing thoughts uh, from you for listeners and uh, take a moment, if you will, uh, tell uh, tell listeners what's 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 coming up next here for the Robert Scott Bell Show. Well, we're you know we're on every day, uh, well six days a week. So if you just come on over to robertscottbell.com, sign up for email alerts in case we get banned on on certain things like what's happening now. Um, we've got the big event this weekend in Charlotte, North Carolina. This is available streaming online for free as well. 
Well, actually, no, that one you have to pay for. But there is a streaming event all weekend starting today. Autism One is usually doing a uh, – in Chicago, it's doing a virtual event. So you'll see those links and banners at the website. So there's always more education. We host some webinars from time to time as well. But uh, we've got Jonathan E. Moore every Thursday. He's the FDA Dragon Slayer. We do a lot of political healing on that day. And uh, various guests – and I love your guest list. You're doing some great work there, Ian. I'm so glad to connect with you finally. Well, that's very nice of you to say. Very, very, very nice of you to say. I, uh, I just, I, I'm like any other concerned, if you will, Americans, because I think there's plenty of Americans that are unconcerned, uh, as yeah. uh, certainly I was. Uh, uh, but uh, that's very nice, very, very, very nice to hear you say that, Robert. Uh, take a moment again and, and just give, give some listeners some final thought. Of course, the objective here, uh, I do this every Wednesday. I've been doing it now, coming up in four years, is to simply educate and get people uh, who know what they're talking about. Uh, to educate listeners. Um, so, so with that said, uh, as uh, as this resonates uh, with uh, with those receiving this information, uh, what can they do? How can they best act apart from listening to your program? Sure, now that's good. But yeah, it's a belief system. You've got to recognize that you have been get granted the power to heal and stay well by that which created you. And if you think you're a creation of government, I can't help you. You know, we've got to recognize where our rights are coming from, not government, come from God. And when you begin to live that way, not just on Sunday or Saturday, but every day, every waking moment and sleeping moment, then all of this dissolves because there's no power over you anymore. So disconnect, stop feeding the beast that would enslave you or eat your children. That is a a righteous thing to do and recognize those people, even if they mean well, they are investing in a disastrous future for you and me. So withdraw your consent. Begin to focus on the positive, the powerful, the spiritual, and the love that we would normally have for one another, but not now in the fear porn of coronavirus. So the power to heal is yours. That's what I want to say. Ladies and gentlemen, Robert Scott Bell. You can find him at robertscottbell.com. Robert, thanks for joining Discussion Your Truth. Thank you, Ian. Appreciate you. Uh, Look, folks, uh, the power to heal is yours. Okay, he's a homeopathic practitioner. He just laid out some great alternatives to healing yourself naturally, one of them being silver therapy. Um, Robert Scott Bell. Uh, what a treat this program continues to be, folks. Um, I started this out of invitation. Uh, I never saw myself doing this. Uh, it was, uh, again, it was a, a very good friend of mine, happens to be from Brooklyn, uh, a late friend of mine, that is, um, and uh, somebody I trust. And when you, when you trust somebody, you listen to them, you respect the words that come out, and sometimes the way they ask a question proceeds or expands, or uh, goes beyond just hearing verbal language, uh, written language. It, there's, there's an emotional connection. There are various vibrancies, if you will, uh, that are admitted when that person asks a question. So that question speaks to you on various levels of your senses, if you will, as a human being as complex as we are. And when that question was asked of me by this friend of mine, I could understand the urgency behind that request. And it was a request. And I went to the town hall meeting in Miami Beach, and I listened to Philip Levine, I listened to the CDC, and I listened to Deputy Mayor Eileen Hudak, and I listened to the cronies, okay, the other council members. We just had Dr. Michael Hall from Miami Beach on last week. And he was involved in that same situation, in that same scenario. And I also listened to, I estimate, 300 Miami Beach residents sitting in that town hall opposing a pesticide. Folks, put yourself in that seat. Close your eyes. Imagine that you are telling your government, who works for you, that get fed and clothed and housed from your tax dollars, telling you 
that what you know is worthless. It's a forced violation of your airspace and the air you breathe. That is what the nailed springs were in Miami Beach to combat the Zika virus. Yet there wasn't one proven case of a Zika virus infected person in that county. Yet those people, including myself, were sprayed with a known neurotoxin. Yes, banned in the European Union. Studies out of Sweden proving that it is a neurotoxin and causes microcephaly. So where were the financial strings being tugged? Follow the money, folks. Follow the money. We are all dependent on it because we allow ourselves to be dependent on it. And we've allowed this country to be dependent on a worthless fiat currency. It has no value. And everything I know about cryptocurrency has no value. The value is you and your information. That's the value. The value is knowing everything about you and controlling you. That's the value. There's no tangible value. There's no, there's no backing by silver or gold or even oil, if you will, trees, whatever it may be. There's no value in the U.S. dollar note, Federal Reserve note, bill that you owe. Uh, this is a good time, folks. If this message resonates with you. When I started this program, yes, it was by invitation. Winwood Radio, Representative Winwood Radio asked me to join. And it went from there. And now we've got Winwood One. And we've got another uh, various uh, other platforms that we stream on and replay on. This was by invitation. I never saw this happening. But I do this because I see a country that I love. I see a beacon of light and hope for the world. I see ridiculous invasions of Korea, of uh, Vietnam, of Iraq, of Afghanistan, not based on helping those people live a more civil, de civil democratic life, which is the narrative that you're given. The real reason is to control natural resources. The real reason is money. And your mask, the facade, is a hidden non-government, non-constitution central bank. That is your Federal Reserve. There's nothing federal about it. Not that I know. And not that many other people know. So, May 20th, 2020, if this message resonates with you, share it. And you need to get over the fear that the person that you share it with rejects it. Let them reject it. But when you get a knock on your door with an agency forcing you to be microchipped or vaccinated, you might change your opinion. And that person, rather, might change their opinion. So stand up while you can, folks. The time, unfortunately, was yesterday. But we'll keep continuing to do what I do and what we do here at Discussing Your Truth. And I thank you for listening. Ian Trottier, that's I-A-N-T-R-O-T-T-I-E-R. Twitter, Instagram, those handles, I'll repeat it, I-A-N-T-R-O-T-T-I-E-R. IanTrottier.com, StopMassMedia.com. And buy the t-shirt, you can donate, but most importantly, share it with somebody that you love, or at least respect. Be safe, be strong, and folks, until next week with James O'Keefe and Seth Dillon, be awesome.